Nar. My name is Tamika Ruth Taylor. I'm one of the presenters and one of the authors. This seminar is actually named after my book, Write and Retire. Write. It's about how to write nonfiction fast and to create sustainable income for retirement. I want to welcome our viewers online. And I want to say that if you live long enough, <laughs> This is going to be your business. Retirement is everybody's business um, if you live long enough. And uh, prior proper planning prevents poor performance. So we want to share with you some secrets to have a happier and fulfilling retirement and to consider writing as a viable means to that end. And with me this afternoon is another author. She is the model <laughs> to write and retire right. She is none other than Patricia Reed Waugh. She's a justice of the peace and author of the book, Retirement, the Journey and the Destination. And this has everything you need to design a winning retirement. And then, we're also going to have a third presenter, that's Wendy Salmon. She's a financial advisor, and you're going to hear more about that. This evening is going to be more story-like. So think TEDx <laughs> talk with some practical tips for you to walk away with. And so I'm very happy to have everyone joining us. I want to thank Suzanne Muir for helping to create this opportunity for us to have this seminar at the University of Technology in Jamaica. Those of you who are online, can you just indicate in the chat which country you're joining from? And answer this question for me. How many of you are, let's say, 30 years away from retirement? <laughs> if you are 30 years away from retirement, as in age 65, <laughs> Raise your hand, and those in the chat, you can type in 30. Anybody here 30 years away from retirement? I think that would be, no, that's not me. <laughs> Anybody uh, 20 years away from retirement? That means you would be 40. Nobody? All right, so maybe I should reduce that. <laughs> How many of you are 10 years away or more from retirement? All right, one person here. If you are 10 years away uh, from retirement, type 10 in the chat. Jadian, who, anybody typing in the chat? Nobody's 10 years? All right, so how many of you are retired? You are either, you are 60 and over. I just call it that. All right, so we have a retiree here. I haven't touched your, <laughs> where you are on the spectrum. Okay. You are? Are you five years away no, from retirement? I am someone in good health. I want to continue to sign with the never be retired. Sorry. I want to retire from a full time job, but I honestly don't want to retire, so I don't know how to fit into your. Okay, job. excellent. How many of you don't believe in retirement? You want to work <laughs> <laughs> until. All right. And that, that makes this seminar perfect. Um, for you because we are going to show you some ways, especially through writing, that you can have, you can continue to do fruitful and fulfilling work and still be financially fit, but you work if you choose to. That's what we, what we mean by when we say uh, retire right. You want to still be able to do fruitful or meaningful work as you choose. You want to be happy and you don't want to worry about your finances. And because of what a book does, it gives you authority, it gives you wings, it opens a door, it is the perfect platform for you to write and retire right. And so without further ado, we're gonna bring on our first speaker. We're gonna have 60 minutes of presentation roughly, about 20 minutes each speaker, and then we're going to have a time for Q&A. So it's TEDx 
talk style, we're not coming to you with theory. Even though we are doing the seminar at an educational institution, this is more of a storytelling seminar. So you're going to hear my story. You're going to hear Patricia Reedwall's story as one who is thriving in retirement. And let me just tell you a little bit more about her. Patricia Reedwall is the author of Retirement A New Adventure and her latest book, Retirement, The Journey and the Destination, A Planning Guide. A book credited by the Miami-based Today, Caribbean Today magazine, to turn readers' perception of retirement upside down and to help them to have a really happy and fulfilling retirement. She is a regular speaker at retirement seminars. She is a retired chartered accountant and mathematician. And uh, this lady is so inspiring. She continues to do amazing things at her age. And in fact, should I tell them your age? Yes, she is 74 years old. And she keeps trying new things. The, the saying that you can't teach a dog an old trick doesn't work with her. She learned to swim at age 73. And she's doing amazing things. Please put your hands together and make welcome our first speaker, Patricia <laughs> Put some fire in the chat for those of you online. Thank you very much, Ruth. And uh, welcome, good evening, good afternoon to those present and those online and you know I love talking about retirement so I am really really happy to be here uh, I, as I heard Suzanne saying that she never wanted to retire uh, when I did my first book in uh, early 2017 a friend of mine told me that he would never retire Last year, round about November, he <laughs> called me and he told me, he said, Pat, I think um, I'm going to be retiring at the end of the academic year. He, he, he's a professor. So he, in fact, retired in June, June of, uh, of 2022. The, the fact of the matter is that your day will come. Your day has to come. Whether you like it or not, whether it is voluntary or involuntary. Uh, voluntary in that, you know, the time has come, you have reached the age, uh, your company has called you in to, to sign up the forms <laughs> that, that um, you, you have to sign up uh, for your, your, your benefits. Some people get it for their work. Uh, because they, you know, the, the company is now ready to process you, process you out. Uh, there are others who might just decide to retire because they want to go on to, to something else. Uh, you have a lot of ministers, persons who are now in the pastoral ministry who uh, retired in order to go into ministry. So in terms of voluntary, that um, you know, does come. But there is also the involuntary. And this is why it is important for you to plan for retirement. Very important for you to plan and start planning early because you do not know when something is going to happen, right? Uh, illness or accident can take you out unexpectedly. Uh, if you see that slide, uh, you will see that's uh, me on a hospital bed, strung up, right? That is what took me out of the, the working world. Illness took me out of the working world before I was ready. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give two case studies. The first one is Nancy Shell. She is a former Philadelphia elementary school teacher, science teacher. And at age 55, Nancy had an accident that rendered her disabled, took her out of the working world, just like that, an accident. The second case study is my own, which as I say, at age 63, uh, I had some serious health challenges, and in the interest of, you know, personal interests 
of my health. I had to come out from the, the working world. And neither Nancy nor myself was prepared for it. None of us was prepared for it because we hadn't started thinking about it. We hadn't, we had, I had never done a retirement seminar. Nobody had ever talked to me about retirement. I was just going about my life uh, quite, quite happy. You see? So the point is that it is very important for you to start prepping yourself and organizing your affairs so that you can be in the best position whether it comes voluntary or involuntary. Now, in, for case one, case study one is Nancy's case. And in that case, what she did was, fortunately, she had a hobby. Art was her hobby. And although that was not the subject that she was teaching, she used to incorporate little art things you know, in her lessons and so on because she, she, she used to love art and do art. And fortunately for her, she was now able to do this. So she actually did a project, she did a, a, a quilting project and it uh, gave her uh, some, she got some grant funding because of, of how well the project came out, and she used that, that funding, and she went to Fleischler Memorial Art School. She uh, did well there. She won the, the, the prize for the best adult student, and at she- At what age? Uh, uh, at what age? At 55, huh? 50, 50, yes. So, yes, and therefore she, she won, won the prize, she, she started getting, um, she, she was able to enter exhibitions. Wherever there was an exhibition that had a prize, she would enter and, and, she, and she had a unique style because you see, she was doing this as a hobby, so she had developed her style and, and that is it. Now she's one of Philadelphia's, um, Philadelphia's artists and uh, the Barnes Foundation actually took her, her um, she, she did a stint with them and she is doing reasonably well. And so, uh, she's now, she, she gets um, income from sales, um, exhibitions that give her, uh, give her popularity and she does some virtual speaking engagements, especially during COVID. Uh, she was, when, when certain schools were looking to have programs because you know the face to face was was not uh, on and they had her doing some virtual engagements so that that is how so that's case one case study one so it's a hobby that she was able to turn into into an income generating generating um, activity and the truth is that we if we have hobbies that we have developed passions that you know we have nurtured and any special interests that we, we have cultivated, uh, these can all work for us in retirement. But it's something you have to think about uh, from now and really uh, plan for it because there, there are cases where you might have to go and learn. Like in, in her case, for instance, had she been had she been thinking about art as a hobby. Um, as a as a as a retirement event, she could have actually started going to art school while she was 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 teaching. Uh, you know, be, before she had had her accident, she could have been go, going to art school. You know, evening school and so on, and and you know, honing her craft. So the important thing is that we have to think about it before. We can't wait until we are 60 years old and 62 years old before we, we, we think about it. Now, case study two is my own story. And it is the story of exploiting a book, the power of a book. I did not realize that a book was such a powerful, uh, powerful instrument. I honestly did not realize it until 
I found myself in this situation. And I have actually done two books. The first book, Retirement, A New Adventure, and it's targeted for retirees and pre-retirees, persons, you know, around about 60 years old. The, then, after I had gone and, you know, doing quite a bit of seminars and so on, I realized that the younger people, people needed to be prepared for retirement earlier. They needed to understand what retirement was all about. And so, I wrote the second book, Retirement, The Journey and the Destination, a planning guide. Uh, the, that second book, specifically for people who are like 40, their 40s coming on to 50s, and because I want them to recognize the importance of putting their plans in place early enough. So, uh, the book number one, Retirement and New Adventure, and that one, as I say, targets retirees and pre-retirees. The basic approach I use is to understand the essential pain points of the subject and to keep it simple and write about what I know. So, understanding the pain points. That book now was because I, as a retiree, I found that I wanted people to go, I wanted to go to Dunn's River, and there was nobody to go to Dunn's River with me because, <laughs> because everybody else was working. <laughs> My friends were still working. I, I was out, out of the workforce. They were still working. There was nobody to, uh, to you know, go, go with me. And so I realized that uh, as retirees, we have to start looking at all sorts of activities, various activities to keep us active and engaged because it really depends on us. Our, our retirement, the type of retirement we have depends on, it's going to depend on you. And so uh, what I did now was, was with the book, I started saying, what are the things that we can do in retirement? At the spectrum of activities. Chapter one, see the world and find your place in it. That was about traveling. Now, I drew on, at, at, at that count, at that time, I had been to 41 countries. I had already traveled to 41 countries throughout my life for uh, either uh, cricket, football, um, grandstand, grand slam tennis, or, um, or, or work, or to visit friends and, and, and family. So I took all of that and was able to do a chapter on traveling because I, I, I knew, knew the roads. Second chapter was about um, Unleash the Maestro in You. It's about learning to play a musical instrument. Da, I learned to play the piano. Well, from I was a child, I played the piano. Then I learned to play the organ and church organist. And then I'm learning to play the violin. So, da, I can write a chapter on, on that, learning to play a musical instrument. Then, on the other chapter, get creative. It's not just a hobby anymore. Uh, just about hobbies generally. Then, paid forward, volunteering and mentoring. And I have done a lot of volunteering in my life. I'm a justice of the peace, as you hear, and um, volunteer with, with all sorts of organizations. Uh, as a, a chartered accountant, give them free service, um, serve as their treasurer and give them free service and all that, and mentoring. So I was able to do that, get connected, the joy of the internet. Since I retired, I had been uh, going on, part of my activity was to go on all of these webinars, and uh, there were two young ladies, uh, Monique McIntosh and Kadia Francis, who are digital, digital experts, and I follow them, and I go on their webinars, and I make them teach me, and any, any time they're having any class about anything, I'm there. So I learned a lot about the internet, also from um, Alicia Little, internetincome.com. Uh, she, she had, you know, uh, freelance courses to show you how to make money and, and so on with your skills. 
And so I was able to put all of that in that chapter. And then the last chapter was Tell Your Story. So uh, that, and of course, um, you know, I, I suggested that you write a book too, or you can tell your story uh, through audio or any, any other means. And also an important segment in that was going back to your roots. And I'm sure that Ruth will have something to say about that, that, that segment in that book, going back to your roots, because that act segment actually is what she read that enabled her, that, that suggested to her that she should go back to the country to check out her grandmother's roots and out of, out of all of that came a book, The Voice. So, uh, you, you just use, use what, you, what you know and you, you, you get a book out of that. Then the second book, of course, uh, The Retirement, The Journey and the Destination, A Planning Guide, uh, that book for the 40 and 50 year olds and basically I, I based on my experience there are three things that are important in retirement dollars and cents the money right you need money the second thing you have to take care of yourself you cannot afford to get into retirement um, in, in poor health because any money you have is going to be just going, going to doctors and for tests and, and all of that. And the third thing is that you have to make and maintain good connections. A lot of retirees are lonely. I'm in a group of women over 60. And the things that I see, um, they, po they post in that group, uh, that Facebook group, because a lot of them, they are restrained from their children. Their children are not paying them any mind anymore. They are, are, they, they're vexed with their sister and the brother, and they have quarrel in the family, and nobody um, over the house, and nobody pays them any mind, and they are lonely, and all they have is the dog and the cat. And, and you, you know, it's, it's really, really a sad situation. So that aspect of retirement is just as important as the financial and the health aspect of it. You have to ensure that you make connections, build out your network, and that network is, is, is what you will depend on in, in, in that time. So that is uh, the, the, the nexus of the second book. And what, what have these books done for me? They have enabled me to uh, do retirement seminars and workshops. They have their other speaking engagements, uh, uh, like a retirement function, and I'm asked to be the guest speaker for that retirement function, a panel discussion on, on um, retirement, um, magazine articles. Uh, for instance, in 2017, when they had the diaspora conference, I, I was asked, my, my first book had just come out, and I just got a call saying that somebody had purchased my book, uh, and they were very impressed with it, and can I write an article for the Diaspora magazine? And I wrote this article uh, there, Life, in, uh, Life After Retirement. And the newspapers, I have contributed articles to the newspaper, and there is a senior, sec senior section that in the Observer, the Sunday Observer, there's a senior section, and I suggest that you, you, you read that, that senior section, certainly anybody who is over, over 50 years old, I would suggest that you start getting that, that, um, that Sunday, the Sunday Observer and read the senior section because the, you get a lot of tips. And, um, and then you... And then you... So I, I did those newspaper articles. That first one, um, this one says, Retirees make good hires, try us, you'll like us. 
because I was trying to, I was trying to say to Jamaican businessmen, uh, hire us no man, you know, we have, we, we still have some skills, you know, in a part-time position and we can help you young ones and, and um, you know, help to mentor them and, and so on. And then uh, the Business Observer was doing a whole uh, section, a whole thing on insurance, health insurance. And I was able to write, and they, they, I just, again, just got a call and asked to write the article. And um, it, it was entitled, Seniors Challenged by Crippling Healthcare Costs. So uh, you have the articles, you have the media interviews. Um, sunrise, uh, CVM at Sunrise. Uh, TVJ Smile, PBC did a whole uh, a whole documentary on retirement, a whole interview, lo um, long interview, full length interview, um, Love FM, and you know other other uh, media outlets have had me on, and uh, uh, of course you have the book sales that um, go with it, so. When I go and I do a, a retirement seminar at a company, the company, um, more often than not, will buy some books. Some companies buy books for all of the participants. In this, this case here, this company bought books for all of the participants. And the, the three seminars, it was 108 participants. So they purchased 108 books. So, uh, so, so the, the, the point is, you know, write and retire, write. The scope is, is there. And so you just exploit the power of a book. Uh, you just look at all the things that you have done. And you look at your academic, professional, technical, and creative competencies. You look at the resources and the reference materials that you may have acquired over the years. And of course, you look at your own personal compelling story. Because um, you, you, can, you can write, your book can be just about anything. Uh, as a chartered accountant, my book is not about my profession. It's about, it's about life, <laughs> retirement, life. So you, you, can, you can really write just about anything. Just look for a pain point, look for a niche, and, and, and go for it. So, ladies and gentlemen, I would urge you to go write and retire right. What I mean is... By that time, you want to take off the old tires of your life and put on new tires because you would have prepped yourself and you are ready. So at that point, you are ready now to use your writing to retire and hit the road again, as I have done. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, in person and online. I am Suzanne Muir, and I'm happy to be here to introduce C. Ruth Taylor. Um, I don't remember how long I've known her, but I'm just here in the capacity to say that I have been impressed, honestly, with her growth as an author. As of right now, she has published 27 books. And she, in one year, was it 2020? She wrote, wrote 20 books in one year. Can you believe that? And what is impressive to me is, uh, I've met a lot of people because I work at UTEC, you know, you, you meet a lot of students and colleagues. Ruth has taken a determined approach to, once she realized that it was her calling to write, nothing was going to stop her. Everybody in here, can write as many books as Ruth, in my opinion. 
if Ruth can read 27, we can at least publish one, and I haven't published one yet. So I can say with great anticipation, she was here at UTEC once before, and she was trembling, and she was, she was so good that even the person who's now the dean said, oh, that was, she knew what she was talking about, and she was surprised. And since that, she has done so much more, so let us all make her very welcome, Ruth. Um, we look forward to your talk. Thank you so much, Suzanne. And I want you to, if you enjoy that presentation with, I call her Auntie Pat, can you put some fire in the chat and give her a round of applause here. So I told you she's the model. So you're looking for a living example. She's the model. So she's there. <laughs> I am trying to get there. And I want to thank Suzanne. Suzanne has been journeying with me, I think, from 2016. Uh, 2015, I published my first book, or had it published. And then 2016, I started publishing for others. And the first book I published was actually for a retiree, a former lecturer of mine, Dr. Jean Lee. And we ended up publishing it on a budget. So my presentation, what I'm going to do, I'm going to share the story behind the book, Write and Retire, Write, and then I'm going to tell you how you can do that. I'm going to just expand a little bit more on what um, Patricia Reedward just shared, and then it's going to lead nicely into the third presentation with Wendy about finding financial freedom. No, my, I, I, I don't know if you have any tissue out or anything like that, <laughs> but don't cry when you hear my story. It's about moving from fear and frustration to fulfillment. So I am going to be just telling you the story behind that. And so it's secrets to a happier, financially free and fulfilling retirement using books. How many persons in the online have you written a book yet if so type yes those of you who are here how many of you are authors okay <laughs> yes you've written it you have a manuscript so just to publish um, how many persons have a manuscript or you are writing you're writing excellent just it okay awesome so you're at the right place good so We have persons who are live watching. Ask them to search. If you are not getting on, look for, just go to YouTube and type in C. Ruth Taylor, and my channel will pop up. All right. So the story behind what is about to become a movement, the process, and the possibilities. So for me, it started with a midlife crisis. Um, at the age of 34, I was planning to get married. I was engaged for the second time, <laughs> and then the engagement fell apart. That is after my wedding dress was bought, hotel booked, church booked, had my bridesmaid picked out, about to send out 300 invitations, <laughs> and uh, that fell apart, and I was a missionary. So as a missionary, I worked with Operation Mobilization, and that kind of mission work, we depend on the generosity of others for monthly financial support. And uh, I felt like it was time to transition, but the transition should have been to get married, have some babies, start a family, and doing all of that. And that was not to be. And at, the, at, at that time in 2014, as I was just going through this, sad period. I remember a book I read as a child, and there was a quote in it from a famous theologian, William Barclay. He said, endurance is not just the ability to bear a hard thing, but to turn it into glory. And then one of my mentors talked about writing. I had been told that I could write and I should write about 10 years before, but I didn't believe that I could do it. And uh, so it dawned on me, it's time to write. And within 
11 days, I wrote a 68,000 word manuscript. I finally had a compelling reason to write after 10 years, and I did that. So I thought, like everybody else, the first book you put out, once you write a book, you're going to be an instant millionaire. And I could live off the sales of that book, and I wanted to sell 5,000 books. Because technically, if you sell 1,000 books, in, you could make about 10,000 US dollars. Or a, you could become a Jamaican millionaire if you do the math. 2,500 per book, you sell 1,000 books, da-da-da, you, you can do it. Well, that did not happen for me. And so I found myself now at 35, the year after now, struggling to make ends meet. I don't have these 25 supporters giving me monthly financial support. And one day I found myself at 35, I could not find five Jamaican dollars or about five US to take taxi to go somewhere. And I was frustrated. I had a master's degree, I was educated, I was broke and broken hearted. And as a Christian, I felt God was saying, do not take a full-time job. I want you to write and speak to transform lives. Campion College called me, I'm a trained teacher and that kind of thing. And I could not take it. And each month I was struggling to pay the bills, wondering how the rent is going to be paid, what is going to happen. And uh, I was frustrated. The ensuing years, because the first half of my life, I was just focused on ministry. I wasn't wise. I wasn't making any plans to own a home. To retirement, I wasn't even thinking about that. So getting to 35, educated and skilled and broke and broken hearted <laughs> was devastating. And I had this dread. Am I going to reach 40 in the same state? There were younger people than me that had their house and their car and all of these things. And I am here living like a pauper. And I was privileged to have had my master's by age 28. So I was so frustrated. And I was depressed about it. So much so that when I turned 37, I didn't celebrate my 37th birthday. But you cannot live like that. I decided, listen, I read a book by Napoleon Hill, and he says that between 40 and 60 are your most productive years. So I said, I'm going to do something about it. I'm going to set a better sale. And I said, 40 is not going to catch me in the same state. And I had to do something about it. So I decided to design a better life. And I began thinking, what do I do well? And I had by that time published four books, but I would just write a book, publish it, have a launch, and that's it. Then I heard about a movement called 20 Books to 50K by Michael Anderley. He said that he did the math. If he had 20 books each selling $7.50 per day, then he could have 50,000 US dollars and retire in Cabo. No, I don't know why that resonated with me, but I like a challenge. <laughs> so I said, 20 books. Hmm, what am I going to do to make my later greater? Because it's not about the past innings, you know, for the cricket fans and the baseball fans. It's about the next innings. So I said, forget about the, 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 the past innings. I may have missed it, but I'm going to make it right for the next innings. And I said, what do I do well? writing so i said i'm going to write and retire right i was already doing what i loved teaching online writing books helping people to publish but the money part you know was not there so i said 50 is not gonna catch me being broke i need to be financially fit by 50 and i'm going to work out how to do this so I went on a little secret journey to write 20 books in one year because I said, for, I want to have 20 books for 2020. And maybe I could do the underly thing. And then I also learned about the books as a business card. I recognized trying to sell books, it wasn't going to work. Some months you might sell enough to make 100,000. Another month you might only make $10,000. And that can't even pay rent. So I said, something has to shift, and that is when the concept of entrepreneurship came alive. That is, you are leveraging your book to do more than just selling books. 
perfectly demonstrated by um, Auntie Pat in her presentation. So Write and Retire Right is about using books as a platform to do fulfilling work because a book opens doors. It's like it rocket launches you into something. All of a sudden, you write a book. If you want to get on a TED Talk, have a book. You want to get on TV, have a book. Once you have a book, doors begin to open. Does anybody know what's the connection between the word author and authority? Or the, in authority is author. And so a book gives you authority and you're seen as an expert. Even if you write foolishness, you know, it's just the fact of having a book. <laughs> you're seen as an authority. And so I did it. The 20, these are not 20. This is just 13. Some of the books were private, but I did the 20 books for 2020. And I decided I wasn't going to launch all of them at once. I don't know if we can get this here, but in the interest of time, I'll just move on. So I had, I said, I'm going to get rid of this fear because fear is holding me back. And so I decided to launch seven of them on my birthday. But I said, just launching books is not enough. What else can I do? So I decided I'm going to take it to the next level. And some of you may be sitting there fearful and saying, 20 books? I don't even have one book. You're talking about 20 books. You only need one book. Of the 20 books that I've written, one has been the major financial driver and door opener. So you only need one. Just like Antipat has two, but you only need one. So I decided, let me give you a little secret. Many people don't like to read books. A book might be $7, $20. But they will pay you $700 to learn what is in the book. <laughs> Welcome, Doc. That's what they go to UTE can do. Pay a whole for money to, to read. So I said, you not being willing to read is, is actually good for me because I will do the research and come and teach. You're going to pay me more money for that. So I have this marvelous book about write fast, publish on a budget, and um, generate lasting income. I call it authorpreneurship because it is leveraging the book, doing more with the book beyond book sales to earn. And it, I don't think I've sold 50 copies of that book. And I turned the content of the book into an online academy and membership group. I won't tell you how much I have earned from it because I don't want people to start troubling me. <laughs> but it's much more than what I would have earned. And it is one book, and it's been the main driver. Suzanne Muir, who's been journeying with me, has been a part of that. That one book got me back on TV. I was afraid to go back on TV and do stuff like that. And I just sent a message to TVJ and I got back on, on TV. A book opens doors. So what are the steps to use one book to write and retire right? You want to be still do you want to still be able to do some fruitful work. Because you can't just sit at home doing nothing, right? And you want to be financially fit and active in your retirement. So that's what it's about. You have to have a shift in thinking. It's not just about the sales. A book is much more. It's the authority and the platform. You don't have to sell a hundred books. One speaking engagement, depending on who you are, most of you are, are doctor this and doctor that. They will invite you to come and speak and pay you $1,500, just US dollars, just because you have a book and pay, you, pay your airfare and all of that. <laughs> All right. So don't worry about people not reading. That is your advantage. Let the book open the door. <laughs> and let them pay you to teach them what is in it. If you write it, you will speak it. If you write it, you will teach it. And so it is said that you make more money by teaching the book than by selling the book. There are people who have million dollar businesses just by having a podcast and, and a coaching program and other things by teaching what is in the book. So, yes. It's not an age, it's not an, it's not an, it's not an age. It, it's not an age, it's a number and a lifestyle. 
and it's a journey and a destination. So I want you to think about this. You don't have to answer it now. But how many books would you have to sell to make 47,000 US dollars? Given that a book on Kindle at its highest price for independent authors is 999, and you're getting 70% of that. Any mathematicians here to work that out? <laughs> How long would that take? What about if you set it at, its, at a very... Books you'd have to sell to get that. I'll take your word for it now because I'm not doing the math. Awesome. What if it's a print book at $19.99 and you're getting 60% royalties minus, say, $3 for the print book? How many books would you have to, to sell at that point? <laughs> A whole leaf. Look at the reverse with the entrepreneurship model. You have one product created from your book. Let's say you have a subscription plan where they're paying you $47 every month to hear what is already in the book. <laughs> How many people do you need to get $47,000? Just a thousand is less than that, you know, because if, it, if you have doing it every month no it's all over the world yeah okay well let's look at this simple math 50 people each month would give you two thousand three hundred and fifty dollars if you were to sell 50 books you're not making that much money if they stayed with you if you got a hundred people per month at the end of the year you would make fifty six thousand us dollars is the light bulb going off yet <laughs> Number two, what if you just had a $99 product? Maybe it's a kit, maybe some instructions, something that you package, or just something that you package, and you just had people download it. You're not teaching, you're not doing anything. If you had 50 downloads, that's 4950 US dollars. If you had 100, that would be an extra $9,900, and you don't have to wait till, till you retire. You can start doing that No. That's what you can do, because you can create digital products from your books. So what kind of book can you write to kickstart it? I like to say write a Ruth-like book. For those of you who know Bible, Ruth is a very short book, so I write small books. I say do small books between 10 and 30,000 words. This is what a 10,000 word book looks like. This is my grandmother's book, and I'm doing a project for her, and I can say this. I didn't ask people to give, but... I wrote about her life and everything, and people have given over, what would I, if I could do the conversion, 200,000 Jamaican is what? In US. Yeah, because about 2,000 US has just been raised because they heard the story, because story sells, facts tell. All right? It, this is like a 15,000 word book, small. This one here is about, 23,000 words. So if you want to, pub publishing can be expensive, anywhere between 1,000 US and all, 12,000 US. But if you write a small book with just your story, think of the word, um, sell, it's your story, your experience, your expertise, and lessons learned. You want to put your expertise there, because you know, if you want to coach or that kind of thing, you can do that. This one don't have any expertise, it's just a story. <laughs> and people love to read these small books. But you could produce up multiple small books and it's like Netflix, Netflix reading, right? So let me move on. So it's just a simple book, all right, with a story. What's possible books to box? I, 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 I share that a little. There are over 30 plus different income streams that you can earn from a book. In other words, you can convert it to those things. The book in different forms is multiple income stream, ebook, paperback, screenplay, movie. There's also live online events, live or online event, conferences, you name it. Publishing products. You can turn the knowledge of writing a book into a business. All of those things. You can you can turn the content into music, songs. All of those different things. You can become a book marketer. You can, you can be a media PR person, help authors. So I have a publishing skill center in which I have a number of people across the world 
including high schoolers who are helping authors to publish. They create videos, they will help with the formatting and the different things, and they are earning. Even the transcription, they are earning. If you don't want to write it, you can speak the book, and you can earn from high school to other things. So what have I done now to prepare to retire? Right? I read Patricia Reedwell's book, Retirement, a new adventure, it resulted in this book, and then my insurance had lapsed for about, for a good little while. <laughs> so I had no insurance, all of that just went. And uh, as I read the book, and I'm an introvert, I love to stay home and that kind of thing, the book kind of said, no, 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 no. Retirement is also about your lifestyle. So you have to build community. So with interviewing her and reading her book, what I did, I said, I have to get this right. No, I have had health challenges, so not any and any insurance will take me on because I've had two long, three long collapses. And so that kind of blacklist me. But uh, there are ways to work around it. And so one of the things I've done, I've taken one book, Entrepreneur Secrets. I've created at least five different income streams from that. A book to a boot camp. I think I charged $300 for that at one stage. Now you can multiply that if 10 people come at $300. That's 3,000 US you're just making one day. Book to membership group that I have now is $47 per month. In January, it's going to be $97 per month. This is one book in a multiple income stream. Book to coaching. I'm teaching people, coaching them. They're paying me 500 US or whatever. It's my expertise. So just substitute your expertise in there. I'm using the expertise of teaching people to write and publish, to earn like this. Not only that, I'm also doing some career coaching and other things. Your expertise. The book is just to open the door and say, I am an expert in this. You can trust me. That's what the book says. Books to courses. So I have different price courses. You can do that. And you don't have to sit there and teach it. You can automate the courses and people will buy. The first course I created was for $99. Somebody asked a question in the chat? Okay, I'm going too fast. Size of a small book, between 10,000 and 30,000 words. Book to podcast. You can educate people. So now I, I have the Entrepreneur Secrets podcast. I have the Entrepreneur Secrets Academy. I have uh, Entrepreneur Secrets 101. I just name everything after the book. You don't have to. But it, it, it ties everything together nicely if you want to build a brand. But you don't have to. And so my aim is to raise up to, uh, by 2030 10,000 entrepreneurs. You don't need five different income streams. You, you just need a book and another extra way to earn. That could be you doing workshops, seminars, speaking engagement, leveraging the book. And uh, that's what it is about because I am saying shift the narrative. It's not just about selling books. Understand the power of a book and you can become financially fit faster. What has happened since I started this module? I'm funding my doctoral studies from it. I'm giving out scholarships. I've been able to help 50 authors to create extra income and about 20 different freelancers from teenagers all the way to retirees to be able to earn. Not just earn because you're an author, but all the support services that come with marketing and publishing and writing a book. And so I no longer have to worry about <laughs> the rent being paid. I, I, I'm not depending on financial donations anymore. So I went from depending on others for survival to being able to take care of myself because of the concept of authorpreneurship. Doing more with your book than just selling it. Creating multiple income streams from your book. And so I want to say, will you join me for that? If I can get 10 of you, 10 authors to encourage 10 more, that would be 100 authors. If those 100 encourage another 10, that's 1,000. And if those 1,000 encourage 10 more, then I would have my 10,000 authors. It may be in three years, but certainly by 2030. 
And so that's my invitation. Will you join the authorpreneurship movement? To get you started, I have some free resources. If you signed up for this seminar at 5 o'clock, the first 23 persons that signed up, an email will be going <laughs> to your inbox. I wrote a book called The Rocket Writer, chronicling my story, how I wrote 20 books in a year, and it's free. The ebook is free, but I also converted the ebook to an audiobook, and you're the first to get it. So you're going to get that audiobook so you know how to start. I also have available for free a chapter from the book Write and Retire, right? So if you don't want to buy it this evening, it's only 2,500 Jamaican or 14 something online. I am giving away chapter four about retiring right. So if you signed up, you're going to get that. I want to encourage you to get Patricia Reedwa's book, Retirement, The Journey and the Destination. And then in 2023, we're going to have a Write and Retire Right masterclass. So if you want to learn more, it, it's going to be for eight weeks. It's going to be four ninety seven dollars if you pay in full. Authorpreneurship, right? <laughs> and you can write U.S. dollars, and you can write the book during that period. We're in Jamaica, sorry, U.S. dollars. One fifty five times four ninety seven. Do the math. <laughs> I know, but I operate international. And that's the beauty. You're in Jamaica, but you can earn in U.S. dollars. It's 77000 And you can have a payment plan as well with that. So I want to encourage you to join the movement. And finally, the other piece of the puzzle, which is going to bring on Wendy. I wish I knew some of these things earlier. I didn't have a retirement plan, no fund, no retirement account. And one of my friends, a mentor, had a birthday celebration. And instead of us giving him gifts, he invited us to lunch. And he invited us, five of us. I didn't know who Wendy was at the time. And Wendy was one of the invitees. Remember I told you, insurance laps. Everything. I don't have no retirement account. Everything just popped down. But things start going for me now. Um, things that were happening because of entrepreneurship. Yes, yeah, so the final aspect about being financially fit is where Wendy came in. And Wendy shared with me, she said, you know, if you had invested X, X amount, you have some rich ladies every month, they have money coming in. Do you know how they do that? They have this retirement account, and when it reaches maturity, each month they are getting X amount. I said, what? This is the final piece of the puzzle. So today, 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 as she's here, I am going to sign up for that plan. I've brought my money, and she's supposed to have the form, so that if my life is spared at 60, I have a lot of money coming in <laughs> each month. And so... That is the story behind Right and Retire Right and how you can do it. And the final piece of the puzzle is the financial part. And I'm going to invite my friend, Wendy Salmon, financial advisor, to come and just give you that portion. If you enjoy that presentation, put some fire in the chat and make welcome <laughs> Wendy Salmon. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful presentation. Awesome presentation. Yes, coming from Ruth and um, Antipat. Yes. <laughs> Patricia Reed Wall. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, those of you who are here, and of course, I'm sorry, and of course, those in virtual land. Uh, streaming in live, I just sat there and I was just taking in everything as much as I can. I'm sure I will not be able to recount everything right now, but um, I really enjoyed the story. Um, a 
I mean, this, this is a story. The experience was lived. And I'm sure um, while going through those experiences, Antipat, that, you know, it was a challenging one. We have seen her hooked up in the hospital there, right? And then we also heard about the story of um, that case study with Nancy, right? And I mean, these things happen, like life happen, you know, the challenges, the challenges of life, it comes upon you at times, and in most cases, unaware, right? And so, of course, coming out of um, Ruth's presentation, I mean, so much has been said, so many ideas she has put out there, very creative ways that are available these days of enhancing one's financial security program, different streams of income. And we're seeing here where in these two cases, um, Patricia Reedwall and C. Ruth Taylor, where they are actually living that experience as it relates to writing and retiring right. Okay, and that additional stream of income coming in from that. And so, of course, I'm going to be talking about retiring right financially, of course. Right. Financially. And, you know, we want to look at some of the roadblocks that actually set a lot of persons back. And, you know, we want to realize that retiring right financially is really a call to action. It's about doing something about it. I mean, nowadays, it's very difficult for anyone to be able to say that, oh, I didn't know. We saw the living examples here. And I'm sure, you know, the internet is a place, is a, is a go-to place to get all the information that we need to have. So it is really not a bag of mouth anymore, <laughs> you know? We can't keep talking about it anymore. We want to be able to be about it, do something about it, right? And, you know, the over-procrastinating and overthinking, you know, putting it off until later, we have the information. And until we start to take control of your current situation today in order to achieve your future objectives tomorrow, you know, then nothing will happen. So retiring right financially is calling you away from a state of procrastination. It is saying, like the Nike slogan, just do it. Taking action today and starting doing it, right? Whether you start off big or small, the important thing is to start. And when you start, then you're going to find that the way just started opening up. So I want to talk about how do we earn our income? Because while we want to reti retire right financially, there has to be income earned, something that we can take from and set aside something to put towards those future long-term goals. So there are really three sources of income, you know, and we're going to look at them. Number one is you at work. You have to be able to have some form of skills, knowledge that you can, that can generate an income, right? So that's you at work. Number two is your money at work. And we'll look at them individually. Number three is charity. We're not going to talk much about that. And we even heard that in um, Ruth's presentation when she mentioned that, you know, there was a time in our life, a period in our life, when things wasn't going as good. But we give thanks. Things are so much better now, and she's thriving. Okay? So number one, you at work. 
This is the most important of the three, but it is vulnerable and subject to three major threats. That's you and I. Sure, but there's, there has to be somebody that runs that business. So when we are talking about you at work, we're talking about the human has the machine that actually drives productivity, right? And we're looking at how the human can be affected. And therefore, if you are affected, then everything else is affected, right? And we saw that in Antipat's case where, you know, accident and sickness, and that throws out everything, right? So let's look at the three threats that can affect you and I at work, right? That's death, certain. The difference is when, right? But very certain, okay? Disability is a possibility for any one of us. We're here today, we're looking well, you know, and we give thanks for that, and we relish the moment, okay? But the truth be told, all the people, the patients in the hospital today, most of them, if not all, they were quite fine, and something happened, and they are patient, in a hospital facility today. So disability is very much possible for any one of us, okay? And that's a threat to you at work. Old age is certain. It is very much certain. The only way it is not certain is if that comes about before old age, all right? So we wanna look now at how we can financially mitigate against these threats. What are the financial risk management tools that we can employ, put in place, implement, in case any of these three situations occurs that could still give us some meaningful form of living? Right? So, okay. Number two is your money at work. And your money shows up when you are no longer able to work, whether because of debt, disability, or old age. Number two becomes the saving grace for number one. Do we remember what number one is? You at work, wonderful. And the saving grace for number three, do we remember what number three is? Charity. 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 Let's go again. Remember now, we're dealing with the threats, right? Right. Uh, yes, but I love the participation. We're together, right? old age, right? So we're looking at how the three, the, the three threats to you at work, right? And how we can mitigate against those life eventualities. Okay, number three. These are, this is a third one of the different ways in which we earn an income. But you realize we're not talking about that because that's a no-no. That should not be, that should not fall, form part of your financial planning program, right? So we can cross that out. So that now would leave us with number one and number two. And that is you at work and your money at work. Okay, good. All right, financial security in the event of debt. What are some of the 
tools, risk management, financial tools that we can put in place. Your, your life insurance program. What does it do? Life insurance replaces your income to your family. Definitely. This is even more so important, especially when you have young children. The truth is, when we work, our income goes to taking care of our family. And when we're no longer able to work, those responsibilities remain. And this is where life insurance will now come in and replace that income to the family. Of course, it all depends on the level of coverage that you have, how adequate it is. But we are seeing the concept here, right? It cancels out your mortgage obligation. And in the case of those who are, you know, who, who pays rent, of course, it helps to keep roof over the family's head by paying the rent. It sends your children to school, college, university, pay off outstanding debts, and settle your estate. These are just few of the things that life insurance does. Life insurance, next one please. Is it being changed? Like I think I am, um, all right, this is where I'm at. <laughs> Okay, great. Financial security in the event of disability. So we're looking at the three different threats and how we can mitigate against them by putting in financial security um, instruments in place. What are the causes of disability? Sicknesses and accidents. And we went through some of that, we saw some case studies coming out of Antipat's presentation where herself was, you know, a living example of that. Critical illnesses such as heart attack, cancer, stroke, being diagnosed with a rare disease, you know. I've had clients who fall in that situation, right? Motor vehicle accidents. These are some of the different causes of disability. Then we want to look at financial security, risk instruments in the event of retirement. And we all agree that retirement is certain. The only way it is not is debt comes in place, right? So you want to think about now your pension plan, supplemental retirement income plan, cash values from your life insurance policies, royalties, for example, from books, and we're seeing that coming out in Roots Publishing and her as an author, and Auntie Pat as an author, right? We're seeing these things where they have, in Auntie Pat's case, she have supplement her retirement income by leveraging books. And those books continue to pay her as they get sold, right? I believe you'd have written that book just once, right? <laughs> right? And we're seeing that in Ruth's case. Now, Ruth is not there yet in terms of retirement. Antipat, she's there, and she told us her age earlier, for sure you're not looking 70. 74. 74. 74, and very pr proud of it. And, and we're hearing here, for those who are online, that she's looking like 55. <laughs> Congratulations, you have kept yourself very well. Yes. And of course, we're talking about different ways in which you can supplement your retirement income. One of those ways are real estate and rental income. Not everybody will be able to do that, 
right? But these are different ways in which you can have additional income coming in. We want to look at um, a case study here because we're talking about retiring right financially. And though we can look at different streams of income, there's one stream of income that is most important because of its stability, its certainty. And we'll get into that a little and you will see something coming out here out of this case study. Let's look at a 25 year old person and let's use age 65 as the base age for retirement. Now, I am not saying in any way that age 65 is the only age that one can retire, especially in the 20th century, there are people who are retiring in their 30s, people who are retiring in their 40s, 50s. So no longer is 65 the age. We're just using it for the purpose of this conversation in order to bring a point across, right? So 25 years of age, this is a person who would have just left college and let's say start their first job, right? This person will have 40 years to go to retirement using 65 as the base. This person is contributing $14,000 per month. And for those in the diaspora and abroad, because I know we are streaming on YouTube, when you're listening to this um, recording, we're, we're referring to the currency of Jamaican dollars here now, not USD. <laughs> All right? Certain, certainly, right? Right, that's about 90 US per month. Okay, if we do the conversion. Currently we are around 150, 155 to one exchange. Okay, so 25 year old with 40 years to go contributing $14,000 per month would actually contributed $6,720,000 over that 40 year period. The approximate value would be 49 million plus. That person would now be earning or getting a pension income of $450,000 per month. As compared to a 55 year old individual who would now have 10 years to retirement contributing the same 14,000 per month, he would, over that 10 year period, contributed $1,680,000. And his approximate value would be 2.6. His monthly pension income would be there you go. So we're hearing the figures in, 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 the, in, the, in the room here. $23,523 per month. So it's a man. It's your <laughs> oh, we agree with that for sure. For sure. For yes. And therefore, the point. It, I agree, so much agree. We all will agree to that. Well noted. So the point is well noted, right? Okay, so let's look at um, how we are gonna mitigate against that. Um, so sending it ahead of you, which is really paying yourself first, right? I mean, when you think about it, Whatever your salary is today, right? Shouldn't, it, shouldn't you be able to keep a portion of that for yourself? Should everything be going out in expense on the expense column? Utility, 
you know, just in consumption. No, some should be kept for yourself, all right? So by making your monthly installment, you're actually making out checks to your future, to yourself in the future. These checks will come, become your monthly income in retirement, and this is without fail. Remember earlier I said that of the different streams of income that you can think about, your pension plan is the most re reliable at retirement. Okay, it is reliable, it is dependable, and you know what, you cannot outlive it. So income at retirement, what you will realize, as was alluded to in Antipat's presentation, is basically what you have sent ahead of you. So the only thing that will be there when you get there is what you send on ahead of you today. Right, you can stay there now. Now, there are different persons, you have self-employed persons, contractual workers, and you have employed persons. I would encourage every single employee, employee to join your company's pension plan. If for those companies that, right? For, so, so for those companies that have a pension scheme, it's like a no-brainer. Okay, great, good to know that. And I'm certain you're a part of it, <laughs> right? So there are benefits to be had from that, such as tax advantages, okay? and the employer's matching bonus, the employer's contribution. You want to take advantage of that. By not taking advantage of that, if you are an employee, you're like literally leaving monies on the table. Okay, you're doing yourself a disadvantage. So that is key. Once your company has a pension fund, as part of their employee benefit programs, important, get on that, be a part of it. Now, for self-employed persons and contractual workers, that is different, right? And even more so important, you have to look after yourself. If you don't look after yourself, no one else will, Amen. right? It doesn't make sense to me, right, and I'm sure persons will agree with that, to be able to say after 40 years, you know, 50 years that I have run a successful business, but at the ending of the day, now at 70, you know, there's really no income coming in, okay? Business can fail, you know, things happen, I can relate to that, you know, but that's for another time, okay? So for self-employed persons, you know, there are approved retirement schemes, the IRA. You want to get involved into those, all right? Supplemental savings, and we'll get in, in you, we'll talk about that. For retirement, you want to take a holistic approach. It's not just about having a pension plan. While that is very important, so many things can happen even while you're young, more so when we get older and you know, start to slow down and you know, there's a natural progression of life start to take place where the body is concerned, wear and tear, et cetera. So you want to think about your life insurance um, plan, your critical illness plan, and yes, paycheck insurance, a lot of persons don't know that you can actually insure your paycheck, yes. It's called disability income replacement, and this is, these are different um, solutions that are offered through my company and myself, right? Long-term care insurance, did you mention? I'm sorry? Long-term care insurance, did 
long-term care insurance is not something that we, we carry, right? But it's definitely something to consider, okay? People are living longer. There are a lot of um, facilities going up and they are very expensive. Most persons, I'm sorry? Right, but these are things to consider, okay? And of course, emergency fund and international health insurance. In international health insurance is certainly here in Jamaica, and this is something that we carry. Retiring right financially. Okay, can we get back to that slide, please? Okay, previous one. Okay, right. So we go back now. Next. Next. No, you're going. You're going backward. Four. Okay, this is it. Okay, great. Thanks. Retiring right financially is, in fact, as I said earlier, a call to action. Right. So we're not talking about it anymore. We're being about it. All right. I love this quote from Mary Kay Ash. And it says, ideas are dime a dozen. People who implement them are priceless, right? I remember in Ruth's presentation, and she talked about those period of fear, you know? But there comes a time when she decided to, and here is the product of what we're seeing today, because she made a decision, right? So we want to just do it like the Nike, and of course, all of the solutions that we're seeing there can be available. You can contact me and we will sit with you, talk to you about your situation and develop a program to set you on that path where you retire right financially. So whether you are 25 years old, 40 years old, or 50 years of age, when is the best time to start? Now. The best time to start is now. Okay? Thank you. Sorry. By the way, just before um, I go, I just want to mention, and I see that smile coming out on Ruth, you know, here's one of her book. This one, you know, I was able to buy from her, and I think that this is just so awesome, of a book, When Trees Talk. I love the bamboo conversation, the bamboo tree conversation. When Trees Talk. Ruth literally talks to trees in this book, and the trees talk back to her. They have conversation, right? And so, you know, I'm just so proud of you, Ruth, um, for the work that you're doing to have uh, publish, to write and publish 20 books in one year is no easy fleet. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. Give it up for Wendy in the chat. So just a clarification, I wrote the 20 books, but I published 16 in, the, in a year. <laughs> It's still, uh, yeah, it's still, it's still massive. <laughs> I launched seven, so I made those um, public. All right, we are at the end. We want to thank you for your patience. If you have any questions, please put them in the chat. We'll try to answer them. I want to make a special presentation before I go to Suzanne Muir. This is your copy of Write and Retire Right. Thank you for journeying with me and making this um, possible. And we look forward to the book that you're working on, that we will have that book in 2023. I want to encourage those who are here, the books that we have here are $2,500 each. And uh, just want to say, um, as we await the questions, that even if you don't have the pension fund in place or any of those things, if you write the book, you actually put yourself in a position where you can be earning. Not everybody has a bag of money set aside, 
but a book now gives you the opportunity to begin to earn something and so you can do a blended thing right and so i just wanted to point that out questions that a point okay so the floor is open i really want to make an appeal to persons who are self-employed and contract or or working on contract it is very important for you to do a private some private pension arrangement because i worked on contract and i never did and let me read you something from my book during my working years I was not prudent in how I treated my pension refunds. That was initially when I, I was employed and get, got pension refunds or end of contract bonuses. Had I known what I know now, I would have exercised greater care and deliberation, consulted with a knowledgeable expert and placed those funds in a private pension plan or 401k for use in retirement. I, every time I got my end of contract bonus, it was another trip to another World Cup cricket or World Cup football or Grand Slam tennis. And I was all over the world following the West Indies cricket, cricketers down to South Africa, up to, to England and all around the place. And that is that that is is how I spent those funds, which at an end of contract bonus is intended for you to put in a retirement fund. So uh, let me warn the self-employed persons and the contract workers. Right, it is your responsibility, and you have to you have to make this this important decision and do it or else you are going to regret it later on. You got it straight from the horse's mouth. Thank you. And I took that advice to heart, which is why I'm going to sign up today. For those of you who want my contact, my website is extramileja.com, E-X-T-R-A-M-I-L-E-J-A.com. And every November, I have a free writing challenge that I prepare you to write a, a small book in 30 days. Antipat wrote that book on the challenge last year. And uh, it's the Indie Entrepreneurs Facebook group. And it's free. So I normally prepare you for the writing challenge at least seven days um, before. So we're going to send out emails. We also have a one a 68 minute audio that will also prepare you and then we show you how to publish it affordably as a matter of fact we have a free course called publishing secrets 101 that teaches you how to publish a book on a budget if you subscribe to my youtube channel all of that is there see ruth taylor on youtube or you can go on udemy publishing secrets masterclass 101 so you have no excuse you know i have a book to teach you how to write i have a group to teach you how to write without getting paid uh, without paying for it we have free publishing classes and how to leverage the book we actually have a free audio book on youtube called penny to win it and so there are lots of resources. I also have a podcast, the Entrepreneur Secrets podcast, every Monday where I discuss these things. Yes, extramileja.com, extramileja.com, E-X-T-R-A-M-I-L-E-J-A.com. Suzanne, you had a question. A small book, you're looking at about a thousand US or a hundred and fifty thousand Jamaican dollars on average. But I teach folks to publish on a budget which is five hundred for five hundred dollars or less than a thousand US dollars. So in Jamaica that would be what? Seventy maybe less than a hundred thousand between 
70 and 100,000. But I, the first retiree I helped, she published for less than 500 US dollars. Because if you follow the secrets, how to publish on a budget that I teach, you will do it. But if you're coming to me personally to help you, we have to spend the time. <laughs> it's going to cost you more. I have an academy, the Caribbean Entrepreneur Secrets Academy, or the Entrepreneur Secrets Academy, where I work with persons um, each month and uh, I help you to publish for less than a thousand US dollars and they even print books with that so that's the alternative it reopens in January at the Caribbean Entrepreneur Summit and it's going to be for six intense months so you have to come be prepared on average it takes 90 days um, to publish if you're writing to publish sometimes on average six months and I work with you and Auntie Patty's testament, testament of that. She took a month to write that, and then she took maybe about... Oh, well, yeah, during the challenge, and then she took her time to publish it after. On a budget, she didn't spend a thousand US on it. She didn't spend a hundred thousand. We print um, via Amazon. Amazon um, has a Kindle Direct publishing arm. So the price you see for your books on Amazon that you go and buy, as the author, you get a discount when you are printing. So you could get 100 books for less than 100,000 Jamaican. You, you, it's hard to get that with a local printry. And so we say if you're printing 100 books or less than 200 books, go via that route. If you're printing more, strike a deal with a local printry but you can print on demand so like these books that i have here i print 10 when the 10 are finished and i make back the money then i print another set you don't have to have books that you stockpile you print on demand and this book was published on a budget too i got a deal <laughs> and i think i only spent money on the isbn go ahead doc you had a question uh, I distribute via Amazon and I hardly put my books in bookstore because if you don't have a name or a campaign, it just stays there. But you normally want like a central location where you can send persons. So I use York Pharmacy. Um, I've contemplated the other stores, but I, I, because the truth is too, I am not so much interested in selling books. I'm interested in leveraging books. So I will sell the book as part of my program. So if I have a course or so, then you, you have to get the book. But in terms of going out and selling books, I don't do that. But as I said, if you sell a thousand books a year, that's a good amount of money coming in. But it just takes a lot more work. But our authors have their books all over. Kingston Bookshop, Sangsters, you just have to write them and the bookshop will take between 20 and 60% in royalty. In, in what do you call it, commissions? Yes. Suzanne has a question. The Caribbean Entrepreneur Summit. Yes, I mentioned it. Yeah. Yes. She's talking about like depending on that, like I was depending on that.
there is critical care. I have a critical care. Uh, let us remember we have an audience online. So we have to, you know, respect that. Um, no, I wanted to say that my books are available at the University Bookshop or Reader's Bookshop. Reader's Bookshop in Ligany. University of the West Indies, uh, UWE, UWE Bookshop, or um, or at at Reader's Bookshop in Ligany. So um, they they are available there. Okay, this seminar should end at five o'clock. So are there any more questions? We have about thirteen minutes. Are there any questions online, Jaden? Just comments. Can you just tell us some of what are they saying? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Yes. Okay. Awesome. No problem. And for those who missed it, you, we'll have this up so you can share it. And then each of us, our contact information, if you signed up, filled out the confirmation form at 5 o'clock, an email should be in your inbox with all the goodies that we um, stated here today. So if there are no more questions, Pardon? Yes. For, for persons who have come to this workshop, we had asked persons to just fill out a confirmation form. If you had not filled that out, just give me your email. Um, for those who are here, because we have an online audience, um, just, just um, send me an email at ruthtaylor at extramileja.com and I'll follow up with you. Those who are in the room, I'll just take your email address and send the goodies to you. So that's ruthtaylor at extramileja.com for those who want to contact me. Or just go to my website, extramileja.com. One of the goodies is there, which is the Rocket Writer. You can um, download that for free, and then you're going to enter my newsletter list where each week I send out information. And please subscribe to the YouTube channel and share, share, share. I just want to thank um, those of you who came uh, and thank my co-presenters and then JD and Brown for helping us with the streaming. Give him a hand. If you need streaming for an event, a church service, whatever, it is. He is available and he is a graduate of the University of Technology. <laughs> and he's very professional. He came long before time and set up. And I just want to say thank you so much for making the stream possible. Any closing words from my um, co presenters as we wrap up? Well, uh, as I told you, I did write, and it seems as if I have now, through that, right-sided my retirement, and therefore I would encourage everybody to write. I think everybody has a book in them, and uh, just the satisfaction of having that book and seeing your name on, on the cover. Uh, my, my first book was done in nine months, so it is my baby, it's my only child. The, the first book, which is Retirement and New Adventure, that's my only child. It was done in exactly nine months, from the time I started to the t time it was published. So the first book, the first book. So I, I would encourage you, and uh, my email address uh, is preadwar at gmail.com p 
P-R-E-I-D-W-A-U-G-H at gmail.com. And um, you, you can, you know, email me if you want any, any further information. And I'm also available to talk at your seminars. For, so tell your, your HR people that um, they have somebody who can talk about retirement straight from the horse's mouth. Thank you. Yes, I just want to say um, again that whether you are 25 or 40 or 55, going on 60, the time to start is now, right? And um, don't hold yourself bogged down about the past. You know that we can't change, but we can learn from it, right? And just start. Speak with a financial advisor. Call me, 482-8898. I will ex share time with you in a 30 minutes to 40 minutes free consultation, just hearing what your current situation is, talking about your future objectives, right? And sort of helping you to map out that path so that you can retire right financially. Thank you. This is All right. Once again, we want to thank you for attending the seminar. And we want to thank the University of Technology for making this possible a blended approach. And uh, the stream will be published. So those who missed it can watch it again. And we just say share, 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 share it because this is vital information. Have a good evening. Go right and retire right. Make your later greater.